Hello, my name is Tony Lyle, an NX application engineer with ProLoom, and I'd like to show you how to use 3D models as your cutting tools inside of NX Cam. So I have a file here with some parametric tools that I've defined, but I want to use the vendor's 3D models or create my own along with the holder assembly. So what I want to do for each tool, I want to create a new file for each tool that I define. I'm going to start with a one inch full nose end mill. And I've already got the parasolids from the vendor's website. So I just simply need to import these parasolids. I'm going to start with this one inch bull nose. And here we go. The first thing I want to do to these is I want to move the object, I want to move the tool tip to the absolute zero inside NX. So I'll position this to the tip of the tool by using between two points. And that'll give me the center of the tool. Now I can uncheck move handles and zero this, zero this out and that's going to move the tool up to the center. The next thing I want to do is I want to move the tool along the x-axis. So I want to rotate this down along the x-axis. So as I do a top view, it's portrayed along the x-axis. This is important for the assembly in the background of NX. Once I have that positioned properly, I can remove this datum coordinate system because I don't want that to import in with the tool when I use the tool inside NX Cam. Next, I need to create a manufacturing file inside here. And I, want, I still have to create the parametric file, the parametric tool, and the parametric holder because those are going to be the, the actual collision detection. So I'll create the bullnose end mill here with a 1 32nd bullnose corner radius. Our length and our flute length, I create these the same. Unless you have an undercut here for the shank, I define this as a shank uh, in the shank tab. And you can define these things. You could give it uh, your description, however you'd like. This is my description, or you could give it your, um, your vendor number, whatever you'd like there. In the shank, I'll define it as one inch. And our holder, we're going to define this. I already, you'll need to measure this holder out. I already have some measurements on it, so we'll plug in some numbers here. So I'm going to offset the holder on the tool, 1 inch 780. And I'll define these variables for this, for this tool. And you can check it as you go by just rotating this tool around and you can check it as you, as you build it. I'll add a new set and change the length to one and a quarter. Be sure to remove your corner radius here. I'll add one final set. And I build this length, this final length, to the back of the holder where it comes into contact with the spindle nose on the machine. And that's what we're going to use as a mounting point. So we can define in our holder a holder library reference number. And this is its unique identifier inside the library. So you can make that whatever you'd like. Or you can, or if you don't create one, it'll it'll automatically create it for you. 
I like to name them myself. Uh, I'm just going to use something very generic as new holder one for this one. Back to the tool tab, I'm going to do the same similar scenario here where I'm going to give it its library reference number, which is the same as the file name. I'm going to export the tool part file and I'm going to specify the mounting point. Again, this is going to be this back surface where it comes into contact with the spindle nose. We're going to specify the tool tip and as long as you built this and moved it to the XYZ origin point, the absolute zero, that's already defined for you. The cutting portion of the tool, we're going to select what actually cuts in the 3D model. So we're selecting the flutes of that model. And let's export this tool to the library. It's going to be a non-indexable end mill. We don't need a holding system. And you'll see it's creating a new tool in the English tool library based on the library reference number we defined, which is, again, the file name itself. And it also created a new holder one in the English holder library. So both the tool and the holder are created. Now let's take a look in our original NX file. We can create that tool and we can retrieve that tool now from our library. Here's our one inch pool nose. This is my description. And now instead of using this one inch end mill, this parametric file, this parametric tool, we have the entire assembly. So I can grab these and drop them in here, regenerate that, and we can verify the toolpath. Now first, it may come up with just the tool here in the display options. We can switch this to the assembly and it'll run the assembly that we brought in, that 3D model. So we'll take a look at that verifying. Uh, I have an environment variable specified to allow this cutter to spin this way. If you're interested in that, you'll just want to put this variable inside your UGII env.dat file. So that's creating a tool. Now let's look at another scenario where we don't have the full assembly. We're going to bring them in individually and assemble it. So again, we're going to go back to our, I'm going to go back to my other file here. I always make sure that I save this. I'll save this file. Just so we always have that as a reference. So once again, we're going to create a brand new file for each individual tool. And we're going to do a half inch end mill this time. And here I'm going to import, again, I already have the parasolids, so I'm going to import the parasolid for the half inch end mill. And you'll see on this one, I only have the tool this time, so I need to import the parasolid of the holder uh, separately. So I already have that as well. Here's my half inch holder. So I've brought both of those in. The first thing I want to do here is I want to go ahead and assemble those together. So I'm going to move the holder and I'm going to position it, the handles to the tip of the holder. And now I'll just move the holder to the top of the part. And I'll, I'll subtract one inch from the Z. So now I'm holding on to one inch of that tool. Now I have that position. I need to also move this to the origin point, the tip of the tool to the origin point. So let's move all three items this time. We'll move our handle between two points again. And uncheck that box and we can zero this these out. We're also going to rotate, once again, rotate it so that it's built along the X axis. We're built along the X axis. Delete my datum coordinate system. 
And now we can go ahead and build our manufacturing uh, tool, our parametric tool. So let's create our tool. We'll create this end mill as a half inch end mill with a length of one and a quarter, six flute. Once again, I'm gonna define the shank on this one. And here's our tool. So our holder, we're, we know our offset is one inch when we subtracted the one inch when we positioned the holder in the assembly. Again, I have these numbers already defined. So you'll wanna typically measure out your tool to make sure you get these, get these right. Because again, this is important because this is what actually detects the collisions when you, when you create operations. So we'll make these definitions real quick. And I'm uh, just to save a little time, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump on up to the, the final diameter here. Otherwise, you could, you could just go ahead and build this on out to, uh, you know, how, however you wanna build this out. But just to save a little time, I'll go ahead and run these on out. Now, this is, this is a part where I will usually measure, I'll put a little bit of a value in here, and I will measure from this face to this face just to get an absolute number of what I need, one inch 414. So I'll just add that here. And that'll get me right onto that face here when I build these tools. Looks like I may have missed a radius here so I can go back here and just change that to zero. Uh, let's give this a library reference. We'll say that this is a 0 0.5 holder. It, it holds a half inch shank. I don't need to export this. We're gonna export it along with the entire tool assembly. And we can use that later on. Uh, we'll show you with the next tool. So back to the tool tab. In the library, once again, we're gonna put our unique identifier in the library reference, and we're gonna export the tool part file. Now, specify our mounting point. Remember that's back here, where our spindle nose will be. Specifying the tool tip is already defined for us. And specify our cutting portion of the tool. And that's gonna be the flutes. We can export the tool. Once again, non-indexable tool with no holding system. And we'll see that it's created the half inch end mill and it created the half inch holder. All right, I will, I will go ahead and save that file. And let's create a half inch ball mill this time. We're gonna do a new file, but this one, I'm just gonna build the entire thing from scratch instead of using a vendor's model. So here I'm going to build a cylinder. We'll do a half inch diameter, a height of one and a half, which is fine. We'll build it from that point. And then we'll just go ahead and put an edge blend on there. Now I built the, the, the cutting portion of the tool separate from the shank itself. So I'm gonna build a new cylinder for the shank. So I have two different segments and I actually like to color with the edit object display. I like to color my actual cutting portions yellow, just like NX displays. Now we can go ahead and import our, our parasolid for our holder, our half inch holder that we used last time. We can bring that in and we can go ahead and just like the last one, we're going to position this for our assembly. And 
and we're going to move it to the top of our tool and we'll just we'll just position this by holding on to one inch again all right we also want to build this along the x-axis again so we'll rotate this tool around and we can delete the coordinate system when I build tools from scratch this way I also like to optimize I like to optimize face with synchronous modeling tools just to clean it up a little bit And now we're gonna go right back in and build in our manufacturing, we're gonna build our tool. So let's create a tool. We're gonna to create a ball mill. Half inch, one and a half length and flute length. Our shank is gonna be a half inch with a one and a half shank length. For our holder, once again, we've offset the tool insert by one inch. And now instead of building this holder, we've already, we're using the same holder as the last tool. So we can retrieve a holder from the library and we can go in and grab our half inch holder. Or we have our new holder that we created on the first tool, but I'm gonna grab the half inch holder and there we go, we've already built it. So it's here ready to go for us. So as you start building more and more holders, they'll be readily available for you to use. So we're going to go back to the tool tab and in the library, we're going to enter our library reference number, export our tool file and specify our mounting points. Tool tip is already there and our cutting portion. So this is another reason why I split the, the body of the, the tool that I created as the flutes and the shank because I need to specify just this portion of the tool to be a cutting portion of the tool. We're going to export this as a non-indexable ball mill and you'll see this time we've created the half inch ball mill but the half inch holder isn't created it's just updated and, and there were no changes so it wasn't actually updated uh, there were no actual changes to the to the holder but it specifies as updated for us now save your file and let's return back to our original file. Let's create and bring in those new tools that we created, that we created here. So we'll bring both of these new tools in here. And we can even move the operations that we have. Regenerate those. And we can watch the whole thing run with our assemblies in our tool display. Here's our half inch ML and there are our half inch ball mill. So there you have it. That's how you can use 3D models from tooling vendors as cutting tools inside NXCAM. Thank you very much for watching and please visit our website or our ProLim page on YouTube for more webinars.